I just reviewed 21 of your images and I came across a couple of themes that I want to talk to you about. But before we get into that, let me see if you can pick out what I'm going to say. So we're going to watch me go through the whole review and then at the end, I'll tell you what I noticed out of these. Let me know if you came up with the same conclusions. A big shout out and thank you to the nine individuals who submitted these images. Um, it can be vulnerable to put your art out there. So I applaud you for letting me put this on YouTube. If you find this interesting and you think it's something you would like, we are starting a new membership level just for photo reviews. I find a lot of photographers feel like their work's not good enough to go pro or do one of their projects. And so this is going to help you with that. So enough of that. Let's dive into the computer and take a look at these photos with me and see if you can find the theme. All right, I loaded all of the images into Lightroom here. We have nine photographers who submitted a total of 22 images. They were allowed three images and they all have some input of kind of behind the scenes of each of these images, which was really important to me that I want to know what you were trying to accomplish with these photos. And any stars or color coding you see were from the photographer. Let's start right off in the very beginning. So this is Frank's dog, Sela. Let me see if I can make this go a little bit smaller. All right, move my little head. Here's, uh, oh, sorry, this is Abby. <laughs> Frank now has Sela. He, he titled it Sela, but it's got Abby's collar. Hmm, not so sure about that, Frank. <laughs> um, one thing I would do is if this is indeed Sela, I would edit out Abby's collar or her little name tag. Uh, but other, other than that, what I'm seeing is I like the expression. I like the light in her eyes and her face is well lit. What I'm seeing though is really, really bright on the left side and really, really dark on the right side. I think there needs to be just a little bit more visual balance. It's all on this side. Um, so if we took this in to develop, how could we do that? Now in, <laughs> in Lightroom, I don't love the, the healing brush. It's not awesome but just pretend it's doing a good job. <laughs> okay, if we pretended that looked pretty good, then we kind of got something like that. All right, so number one, the bright red is gone. So now our eye is always drawn to red, right? Um, so that's gone, that's nice. And then if we go up to the mask and we choose subject, and it'll show in the little box here, what it's trying to decide. Okay, subject. So if we bring down the highlights, but still make her hair kind of believable. So you could see the colors coming up in there now, right? And I bet the white balance is off just a smidge because I think she's a little whiter. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna do a plus and select the background. And we're gonna make that background a little bit brighter because there's some green grass back there. So that's getting a little bit more balanced, but what we're seeing now, I hope you can see my cursor here, um, is, let's see. What you can see now is this whole area. Oh, look, there's no grass. <laughs> so to me, that's a little bit distracting. Now you may have darkened this just because you wanted that effect and that's fine too. So we could go back in there and delete that, but I'm just trying to balance out the lighting on either side. So your eye goes around and around. Um, I do like this photo a lot. I like how long it shows her nose and her freckles and every hair. Um, so, and her little ears are up <laughs> super cute. But if you were to leave it like this, I would definitely fill this in with grass or probably go back and forget what I just did to the background. <laughs> And then you could just darken it all down. Um, so you could just darken everything. And then it just kind of looks like she's in, you know, almost a studio. You can even grab this part and darken it. I, I like that too, actually. Just be careful of the edges in here. Okay. All right. Thank you, Frank, for submitting a picture of a borzoi. <laughs> I'm still not sure which dog it is, um, but I'm just going to go off of what you said it was. So G for grid. Okay. The next three we're going to look at are all Rob's 
images. And let's see, let's see if we can do them all side by side. I just pressed N for this view to see them, the survey view. And what Rob has said, it says all three photos are from the same session. Yep. Session was to include images of a dog with and without a 12 year old girl, the dog's owner. It was at their house. The dog was hyper and not well trained. Okay. Owners required the invisible fence collar to be on the dog at all times when outside. Gotcha. Since one of my goals is outdoor action shots, I complied, of course, so the dog would be safe. Okay. So now I get it. So in this far right photo, it looks like you edited it out. And um, that's a pretty good job. Oh no, it's over here. No, that's her ear. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Let's look at each of these individually. Yeah, not loving that. One way that you can get around that is to bring a long lead or let the client know they need to have a long lead. And then you can just, they can still be safe and they can still be outside, but you're editing out this long lead because what I find is you're trying to match this chest fur. And that is so difficult to do. That's why I tell my clients, if, if it's absolutely necessary to have a harness on, yes, we'll leave it on, but it's extremely difficult for me to edit out. And, you know, I may charge extra <laughs> to really, really edit it out. And sometimes they're just fine because their dog always wears the harness when they're out. So it's natural to them. But you could play around with editing this out in Photoshop. If you've got Photoshop, they have my friend Phil. Uh, Generative Phil could really help with this. You could actually just take out this whole thing and the um, Bart, the collar. It does look like the face was sharpened quite a bit. Um, on a canvas, that would be fine because you already have the texture on a canvas print. Um, and you know, on smaller print, I think it would be fine too. It's not, you know, super glaring, but I can tell here on my 27 inch monitor. Um, I do like the fall off here. So this is all in shadow and everything's just really about this dog. One thing that I would do in here is, I don't know, for some reason, I crop a lot of my stuff to eight by 10 or um, kind of crop it in. Just wanna see what it looks like without that brick something in the background just and then I know that there's extra if they do a canvas wrap so let's see all right that zooms way more in on the dog I like that not this so distracting back here um, otherwise the lighting does look nice and even I would give a little bit more highlight in that eye and see what you could do to take this away uh, let's see if we can edit it in Photoshop all right so I've got it opened up here in Photoshop and a lot of times I like to duplicate this layer just so I can go back to it if I'm like, nope, that none of that worked. <laughs> okay, we're zoomed in, L for lasso. And let's see, I've got a 15.15 feather, which should be fine. Let's find out in a second. Do, 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 do. All right, now here's my friend Phil, generative Phil right here. I don't put anything in here. I'm gonna say generate. So then we've got three options. We got this one, this one, and this one. I think this, let's see, that might be a little bit closer. Although all these are pretty good. Again, the problem being is that I'm trying to fill in very specific chest hair. I kind of like that one. And oh, you know what I should have done also is I should have put a little bit of light right here so i'll this one and i'm gonna do dodge and i'm gonna make it real small let's zoom in a little bit more and we'll do o is a dodge tool and i can see the lights up here so let's lighten up here let's get those highlights popping peoples and let's go back over to Lightroom. All right, there's a little bit of sparkle in that dog's eyes. So we have these two now, before and after. Well, I cropped it too. So not a lot. I like that. I like the pose. I like where she's looking. Um, this one, I would say again, get rid of some of this headroom. So I just pressed R for crop. Let's see what it looks like actually cropping. There's a lot of her forehead up there. Really make it intimate right here. If we were to go back to my eight by 10, let's see how, how much we can get away with here. 
There. That, I think, has more impact. Let's see. Again, I can see you've used a sharpening tool. And can you see there that it hasn't worked right here? Um, so what I think has happened here, Rob, is that, yeah, you're at F1.4 and trying to get all this in focus. You can't do this kind of a depth at 1.4. Now, if they were both on the same plane, which they're very close, it probably could have worked. And this would be okay, as a, again, as a smaller print. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think that's okay. And if we go to the next image, this last one, yeah. Um, I think you're going to see that you have the same issue. You're at 1.4 this whole time, and you definitely use a sharpening on here. Um, so it looks a little funky when you zoom in. Not that everybody's going to do that, but everything in this picture is out of focus except for like right here. So I don't know if you're trying to show the environment, which if so, awesome. Um, but you could like maybe crop some of it out and go to just a headshot. There's a few things you could do with this image. Um, but th the large image is fine too. This is fine. It's just most of it's out of focus. So I'd be real, real careful doing everything at, oh gosh, 1.2 and 1.4. That's, um, that's a little extreme, Rob. And I would give a little bit more room over here. So she's real close to the edge right there and her edge here. Um, so that's going to be hard to frame. But I do like that you have three very different images to show the client. Here's a standing um, looking sideways and a, sta a standing looking forward. You, um, you know, I know I want to let you send in three. So make sure you get a cropped in headshot as well. Um, the other, her other good side, because it looks like she has some distinct markings. Um, and then uh, you said you wanted action shots and none of these are action shots. So not sure what happened to those or if it just was too difficult to do. You're at 200th of a second, ISO 160. Okay, so your ISO you can crank up a lot higher to, so you can get more depth of field. And 200th is pretty slow to stop action. Must have been kind of dark out. Thank you, Rob. We also have Dale. Dale says, this was a practice session with my own personal kitties. Great. Um, shooting handheld without a helper seemed quite awkward. Shot with a 35mm lens and a Sony a7R Mark IV. All right. So this is your kitty. And if, I, if we look at both of these... Looks like both of these are Max. He was more interested than, in treats than staying still. <laughs> Though he was more calm with treats than with kitty toys and such. He kept moving so I could not get the kicker to ever light him from behind for background separation. Gotcha. Yeah, and isn't that difficult? That is very difficult, especially by yourself. Um, and you don't say where you've positioned the kicker. Is it up above? This looks like it's a sweeping piece of fabric. So I can see how you're trying to do the black on black, which is awesome. And you do have some kind of a rim light over here. So you did it a little bit or you've got the main or one of the lights positioned well. So, yeah, I mean, without a helper. Oh, these are two different cats. Sorry. Um, I can tell now <laughs> by the nose. So let's look at this first one. What I'm seeing on here, Dale, is that I think... Everything's over to black. Um, but even at that, you can see just a little bit of overexposed in the light areas. So I don't know what happened there, how you're having deep blacks and bright sh bright highlights. Hmm. And it could have been processing, I suppose. Um, let's see, because I'm not getting any data on this. I just see what size the picture is. So if we just said auto on this, let's zoom back out. That doesn't look so grand. <laughs> um, so let's let's not do auto. First of all, I like to crop in. We don't need all this space over here. So if you were to start off, I just like to start with eight by ten. I have a lot. I saw a lot of sixteen by twenties, and and a lot of things are very very close to eight by ten if you give them a little space. So I like the tongue, but this bright, that those highlights are kind of, uh, they're kind of taking over. And then the shadows, 
you can pull up a bit. Once you start pulling up shadows, you can see that you can see all of the texture in the fabric. So just be careful on that. We could do this and um, choose subject. So I'll choose the kitty cat here. It's detecting here. Okay, so we're gonna pull up the shadows a little bit and we're gonna pull down the highlights, of course, but not too much. You can also pull down the whites a little. You still want them to be white, of course. Maybe the whole overall needs to be just pulled down a little bit more contrast. So then what I would do is I would add something. Um, so first of all, I start with a linear gradient because what you need is something helping down here. Um, so I can see what's happening. You have light hitting maybe from here down, according to the catch light in the kitty's eyes, is coming from up here and going straight down on your background, which is fine because then you'll just pull it down like that. You can pull, see how that makes a huge difference right here, huge difference. So that's good. And then you have the dark background. So really that's not too bad right there. Um, so if you wanted to just leave it like that, that's okay. It's going to have some problems right here just because the whites do look a little funky. But I think just really cropping it in and being real careful with the highlights and shadows is going to help. But I do like this rim here a lot. And I love the whiskers and the ear hair. You can see the light, uh, the color in the kitty's eyes. Not too bad. I think a client would actually like that. And honestly, I think a, cat, a client would like this one too. This one looks very sleek, um, very curious and inquisitive. I actually like this one overall, even without the kicker, Dale. Um, again, I think we have way too much empty space, but what I appreciate is that that gives you a lot of leeway to be able to print this whatever size they want. So if you wanted to do some kind of eight by 10 print, you have a lot of room around there to crop it however they want. So I really appreciate that you did that. I even love a little bit of a shine on her nose. Um, I like this picture a lot. I like it a lot. Could you have come over the do it done things just a little different? Yeah, but I mean, I totally get the circumstances you were in. Um, I wouldn't. That's probably it. <laughs> I don't think I would do anything else. This actually looks pretty good to me, Dale. And then you have this one. This little one is called Little Silver Surfer Girl. Uh, oh, she has a cool demeanor. I think she did the best of the kitties. I can see that. <laughs> I believe this one has AI generative background. Is it noticeable? Mm. Okay. Also, the first she decided to lick herself, and I couldn't really figure out how to nicely get rid of that in post. Hmm. All right. Let's take a closer look at this. So I can't really tell that it's generative fill still has some texture back there if you were going for that. Yeah, I think the background looks fine. I would, this is distracting. And I know the problem is that she was probably moving around. Um, and I can see the lick marks here. I don't think you have to worry about that too, too much. Cause like, look at her face. <laughs> like her face looks so intense. I would lighten this part up here. Let's see, I can see, yeah, she's got a little bit of a mess going on here, but that's okay. I love the S curve. I just love this S curve so much. And you again, have some kind of overhead or a kicker light here that's getting the back of her a little bit. I can see this light source here. So that's nice. Overall, nice. Try not to cut off their tail. Either make it obvious or don't cut it off. Um, so that is a big one, actually. So what I mean by make it obvious, if we do eight by 10 on this and we're really obviously cutting off her tail, we just want to show the S curve of the kitty. I'm getting this a little too tight, but you can see we clearly did that on purpose. <laughs> so, I mean, the tail kind of goes off to who knows where, but oh, well, that's fine. Um, but that is really something to look at is don't cut off ear tips and tails. I would have cleaned this up before the background. Um, yeah, and that's easy to do. You could pretty easily clean this up. You're kind of missing her toes. This is where you're going to have trouble is that you don't have the rest of her toe. I run into that a lot of times, <laughs> but you know, like, let's see, that actually doesn't look too bad. You can just soften these and still have them there, but soften them. But isn't this stunning? Like, look at this. 
If you were to zoom in like this, like what a look. That could even be really, really impactful. It's a little tight, so it would depend on, you know, what the client really wanted. Um, and I would lighten this eye up some. But yeah, I think, Dale, those look pretty good overall, really. I didn't really do much to these, honestly. If you, this was a client session, they'd be super happy. Really, really happy. Now we've got Heather. She says, I took this as an action shot. My challenge was to keep focus. Okay, I'm getting better. Action shots are my favorite. My objective was to get Grizzy in action with his ball and the feel of the cold, snowy weather. Getting good photos in the winter snow is a challenge for me. I never can get the correct color. Gotcha. And the, honestly, Heather, that is the first thing I notice. On your vignette here, First of all, I'm not sure I love vignettes on snow because clearly there wouldn't be a shadow here. And it's warm tone over here and cool tone over here. So I don't know how you did that, <laughs> except for maybe you just applied vignette over everything. Um, let's see. Do I have any other data on this? No. So I would have not done, don't do the vignette. Um, exposure overall, I think is good good. I can see where you're talking about with focus. Yeah, it's because that's what's happening sometimes too, is that your camera's like focusing on the snow. <laughs> um, so I've had that problem too. It's like, where do you, where do you want me to focus, you know? But if you have an eye out of focus, set that for sure. And probably on a small, uh, like play around with that. I know he was probably moving around a lot. Um, another big problem here is you cut off his ear right there. One big thing about any dog and shepherds particularly is their ears are so striking. You never want to cut off their ear. Um, so you could rebuild that in with my friend Phil. <laughs> you could just kind of build in the tip of the ear if you needed to. Um, but again, I think and I think it's way, way too close to this um, left hand side. So if we were to Croppy crop it. And I don't think you need his legs down there either. I don't know if we can get this quite to eight by 10. Mm, it's pretty tight. So if we cropped in, yeah. And I think if we came down here and so we're here, we're here in saturation. What I want to do is bring those blues out of there. If I got rid of that blue on that side, that would be good. Yeah, I can definitely see you're having trouble with the focus. Um, it's interesting highlights in his eyes too. Like there was a lot of snow in front of him. I think it's a very piercing gaze though. And I think if you could rebuild that ear tip, um, your client would be super happy to get this kind of an action shot. Cause you can see the ball, the tongue, the snow, the eyes are right on you. We're going to go over to Photoshop and see what we can do. <laughs> oh boy, this video is getting long. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up a little bit. Nope. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room. If we were to take this whole thing, whoops, and generative fill. Let's see what it'll do. Okay. We have this one, this one, and this one to work with. I'm looking at the ears. I'm looking at his back and I'm looking at the sky. That one looks probably the most realistic. This, his back looks super funky. Here, I'll move this. Okay. That one is black. Back is flat. That's weird. Eh. Too much other weird stuff. I guess I can get rid of that, but his hair's flying around like crazy. Hmm. I think that one's the best. All right, see that ear makes a ton of difference. Overall, good job though. Keep trying, keep going. It's only gonna, it's gonna take practice is what's gonna happen, Heather, is you just, lots and lots of practice and it's winter time now. It's snowing at my house, so <laughs> hopefully it's snowing at your house. Next up, we have these three from Lynn. Okay. Good deal. Great. So let's start with this first one on the yellow. Lynn says, Tucker, this was a free client appreciation pup shoot at a local real estate office. Oh, it was my second time using a backdrop instead of a natural setting. Your thoughts. Okay. Um, there's something a little bit 
ungrounded. Like he feels like he's floating a little bit, <laughs> Lynn. But overall, like his expression is good. You've got great focus everywhere. Let's see if I can see here. You're using a 2470, a tenth of a second. That was an interesting choice. An F13 ISO 800. Um, does that seem right? <laughs> I'm sure you're using flash. Let's see. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you use some flash there. Okay. Um, but I don't understand why you had these settings. One tenth at F13 ISO 800. If you're using flash, which it looks like you are, then you could have done a higher shutter speed if you wanted to. I mean, this dog is sharp. He's fine. Um, but you didn't have to have F13. You could have done half of that and brought the ISO down, just so you know, for future. Um, but I think also part of what's throwing me off a little bit, this is beautiful, by the way, it's gorgeous. He's got a great expression. His ears are awesome. Color is fine. He's just floating there a little bit. And then the yellow does not complement the dog. It's not a complimentary color, I don't think. I would have said, you know, hey, let's do blue or gray or even brown or black. Um, I'm just not loving these two colors together. I think that's part of my problem. I think that's my problem. Let's see what we can do just within uh, Lightroom. I don't know. Let's just play. Let's play for a second then. <laughs> so that's going to grab all of this background. If we did this, we've got the background decided. If we brought it just using whatever we have in here. Like, what if we brought it all the way to... Right? So we could play with the colors. Oh my goodness, pink. No. Blue. See, like, a gray would have been perfect. And this kind of a, a blue would have been okay. Blues and browns go together. But I think that is even better. All right. So that's that one. Let's see. Frito for Christmas. Noise. And you say, this is a Christmas shoot in the woods. Just looking for overall feedback. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think it looks really good. You managed to get the bokeh um, really beautiful in the background amazing catch light in his eye and got the little whiskers coming off. I mean, obviously he could have been brushed out better by the owner. Um, personally, um, he is a little far to this side, but if this was for a Christmas card, you've left lots of copy space. This back here is distracting. I am not in love with this kind of fake snow blanket tree skirt thing going on back here. Um, I don't think your client's going to care because they were there. I mean, they saw it. So this is what their brain expects to see, you know, but if we do the lasso tool and like, what if we got rid of this whole bit back here with my friend, Phil. Okay. Generative Phil generate. I don't usually type anything in there. If it says, Hey, we can't do that. Just type a dot like a period and it will, it'll work. We've got that option, that option and that option. Which one has the hair better? I think that's the best one. Okay. So to me, that whole distraction there is now gone. I like that better. There's a tree, the woods, the dog. Maybe tone down anything back here you want to, but um, otherwise, yeah, I, I like this a lot, Lynn. I would say give it a little bit more space around. And it looks like you did crop it from the original, so you could do that. Again, so they could frame it, so you can um, make it into a canvas wrap. You have that in there, although you can do that here in Lightroom, uh, Photoshop also. So I like that better without the box back there, personally. Looking good. Last one is this family here. This was a beach sunset session. I like the concept of the photo, but it lacks. Your thoughts on how I could do it differently? Oh, from the coast of Maine. My goodness. So I'm just going to take the, um, on, on horizons, I like to either have them flat or very obviously crooked. <laughs> and I can see that you cropped this in. This is not straight out of camera. So... And you do this a lot, I think, in other work. But 
straighten it out. Hmm. That still seems a little bit wrong to me. I'm not sure exactly where the beach is compared to the surf. All right. Let's say that's straightened. Um, it's weird because we have this here too, you know? Um, I do love the uh, reflections in the water. I mean, his head's kind of cut off, but the dog's isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love their expressions. I even love that they're a little bit out of focus compared to the dog. The people don't have to be in focus, although sometimes they might want to be. Let's see. What did you do here? F2.8. Yeah. Um, so I would say you can get away with a lot higher ISO, Lynn. Um, and so you can really, and one four hundredth of a second, I'm, I'm really um, impressed that you got the action to freeze there. F2.8 play around with it when you're out here like this. Sometimes dogs will run several times. See what you think of 2.8, then have them run again at, you know, something that will keep them both in focus. But I like everybody's moving and everybody's smiling and active. I don't really know what else you could do to make this um, better. I would assume it was a, it was the cloudy day, right? But everyone's just having a grand time here. We could probably, yeah, I would say brighten it up. Yeah. So I think brightening it all a little bit just brings that little bit of pop. Um, I think that is really going to make a difference. And you could probably you could probably get away with oh you did a little bit of vibrance, right? I think that makes it look almost like the sun's about to come out. All these colors are really jewelly, like they have jewels, <laughs> jewel tones, you know. Nice. You can also play around with, since their heads are cut off, like how much do you really want the, the rest of the reflection? Is it cool like this? Cause then the dog is huge, right? And like, oh my gosh, there's the whole fam. So because you cut off their heads, you may as well just cut them all the way off <laughs> in a sense. And look at that. I love that a lot, Lynn. I would love a picture of this, like this of my family. Do, 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 do. Jackie has two pets here that she's sent in. Um, oops, not this one. In. Okay, so Jackie says Chloe is her cat. Just starting out on pet photography adventures, I've been practicing on my cats. Okay. I love this. Honestly, Jackie, this looks great. Looks like you're outside. You've got some natural light going on here. Look at that. I, you, how do you not even have... Okay, here's a little one. <laughs> Eye boogies. Always take those out for a client, you know? But I really like the leading line, and I like all the colors in here. There's a little bit... There's a bit much over here, maybe? If we can kind of pull it in, have it match the other sides cropping a little bit. And then I would probably... Let's see, if we did... Hmm, let's say a linear gradient over the green and brought down the highlights some because that's going to bring us into the brightest part, which is her pretty, pretty eyes. So maybe just do that. I mean, that's being kind of nitpicky, honestly, um, Jackie, because this is just gorgeous. Look at her, her whiskers, her eyes. I would get rid of that little eye boogie if you, you know, if they wanted a print of it. Um, pretty easy to do in Lightroom. And this could be a little bit too. Um, I, I see this a lot, a lot, a lot at the shelter kitties. <laughs> so I am constantly taking out the eye goobies, as I call them. Um, not all cats love you to do that while you're standing there with them. <clears throat> right? So Photoshop's your friend. There we go. I, I just, I love it. I think it's amazing. This is really nice. Okay. And this one, Jackie, you said, this is the photo that started me thinking that perhaps I should begin a pet photography business. Mm. Was doing a husky dog sled photography workshop, and this dog, Fern, is part of the team, despite obviously not being the right breed, <laughs> right? <laughs> she was perfectly trained and an obedient model. Oh, okay. So the thing here, Jackie, is this dog's expression is great, but it's being distracted by all these other things. So we've got whatever this is, whatever this is, these super, super bright things back here. So you happened upon this scene, but I'd love for you to think about actually taking this picture intentionally. So could you recreate 
some of this. Now, once you start cropping in, all those other distracting things go away. That's a little bit close. So I'm always, I love Lightroom because it's non-destructive cropping. Give a little bit more space under the chin. You'll know once you crop in too much. Yeah, that is working a lot better. And what's happening though, is like her face is a lot darker than out here. So let's see what we can do. This still is pretty distracting, but it's not bad. If that owner knew the dog was doing that, like this is such a cute expression that they're probably fine with it. So let's do subject. I just love this feature in um, Lightroom now. Goodness. Okay. So we're just gonna up, up the, uh, doo -doo -doo. I don't wanna blow out all the highlights over here is the problem. So we'll just use mostly shadows. Let's, ooh, not too much, Monique. Okay. And then we kind of do a little bit more contrast. Let's see. So then it's kind of more even in my mind. Then let's just do the background. So we're making a separate layer for the background and we're gonna bring the exposure down on that and highlights kind of make those go away as much as possible. There we go. And we can go back and forth. Now we can go, you know, back to the dog's face if we want and do something else with it. That kind of thing. Yeah, that's good. Let's um, let's bring the blacks down a little. Yeah, but that's adorable. I like it. Just bring it in more close to the dog. And I think the owner would be super happy with that. I think that is a beautiful like expression. Even the ears, you have to be careful on dogs because their ear position says so much. You can tell the dog is kind of listening. Like, is it my turn yet? You know, but I think overall the ear position is okay. I sometimes have clients that are very in tune with that, with their dogs. They're like, oh no, that's not right. But I think this one looks fine. Those were good. You have, you're off to a really good start. Um, just keep grabbing those expressions and try to see how many of those you can recreate because that's what's going to take. If someone saw this on your website and said, oh, I want a picture of that like that of my cattle dog, you'd be like, OK, I can do that. All right. I think we've got. Ooh, I better hurry along. OK, we've got Tara. Tara sent in these three, I believe. Ooh, nice. Now, Tara, I don't know if I've got these in the right order. <laughs> um, it says, working on pet portraits using my own dog here. I take so many photos and I only get one or two that I'm happy with. It's always something. Stink coming out of the head, background sky blown out, blurry because I need to slow shutter speed, I thought, to get the right lighting. I just still don't feel like I'm ready to become a true business yet. I've been doing this with pets for several years now. Okay. And so Whiskey and Odin, I'm not sure if I've got these backwards. Background could be better, but it seems there's always something that could be better. Well, I mean, you're right. You're right. Um, and Esther, I think Esther is the kitty. I've realized that one image looks different on my laptop compared to my phone compared to the TV. And you've been using the TV as a monitor because your laptop screen went out. None of them have been calibrated. So who knows what someone else is seeing? So now I have to put dollars in for a call. Collab, uh, calibrator. Again, I feel like I have no idea when I will be ready to become a business, getting my business license, etc. Okay, first of all, Tara looks good. All right, your clients would be happy with all of these. Honestly, they're all looking right towards you. They have some shine in their eyes. They're in focus. The exposure's looking good to me. Um, I think, yes, do not edit on your TV. TVs are meant for something else. Definitely do something with, um, you know, the settings that you're using, the actual like room and the screen. I don't see your, okay. Yeah, this has been edited, so I don't have the original information. So yeah, try, do what you can to get off the TV and back onto a computer screen. Even if it's not totally calibrated, the best, well, a good way to do that too, besides, yeah, obviously calibrate them is just print it at, uh, at a, at your lab, <laughs> like get a good lab and make sure that your colors match up. Um, so this picture, this is the first one. I don't know if this is whiskey or Odin, sorry, is I love that you've made it black and white. This must have all been very distracting back here. And it does all kind of blend together, but it's okay. Now, one thing you're gonna find with these dogs 
is that they have the long nose, right? Um, so what do you have in focus? The eyes or the nose? And you chose the eyes, which I agree with. <laughs> you want to have those eyes in focus. So this is probably a shallow depth of field, but I do love the ear placement, um, like the ear expression. Dogs have so much expression in their ears um, and the intense look in the eyes. I really like this. Um, we tend to think about all the stuff that happened during the shoot, but then if you were just to show this to a client, wow. Um, I think you've got a little something funky going on in the highlights right here. Uh, I guess it could be a little sharper, but I know that you've already played with this. So, um, I would just like play with the highlights cause you're missing some detail on some little freckles in here. This is, this doesn't look good. Um, <laughs> what I just did, but in your original, I think it's going to work out better. Um, so yeah, I would work on just the overall, I like brightening this up a little bit if you could control these little super highlight areas, but I, I really like this. I really like it. Okay. Oh, I guess it's the same dog. Nope. It's not. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> this one I like. I don't know how people get their dogs to sit within this. You, this is, has foreground and the dog's in the middle ground and you have the background. It's very dimensional. I really, really like that. I think you did a great job with that, Tara. I honestly, the only thing I don't really love about this, and I get real picky on mine, is some of these branches, like the dead leaves here and this one here. And if they were ordering it, I might just take that out. Or if I thought they might, um, this highlight maybe, but it doesn't really bother me. I think this is a really good picture overall. Again, you have, looks like uh, the eyes are in focus. Everything's in good focus. I think this looks really good. I'm. Let me see if you have any of your settings on this one. No, I don't know what your settings were, sorry. Um, but I think this looks good. I don't see blurriness at all. I think that looks good, honestly. And then Esther. Um, the only thing here, Tara, is I would be really careful with the edges again um, and the edge down here because you want to have room to frame or to wrap on a canvas, you know, to be able to crop it in any orientation they want. Because if they wanted, say, a square for their home, well, you don't have enough of an image to really crop it as a square. Um, or if they, you know, just if you need a little bit more for framing, you're going to have a problem um, with like how close her ear is right here. I'm not sure what this is happening right here. This might have just been a screenshot. I don't know what this is, but that has to go away. <laughs> um, and then your your depth of field here is super shallow. Um, I'm sure you already know that. Do you have settings on this? Nope. So like this eye is in focus, but this eye isn't. And it would be better if both eyes were in focus. Um, but getting all the way down to the ground where the cat is, is brilliant. You need to be doing that, which you've done. So I think this is a beautiful photo. Just work on the other things also. Um, this little hot spot here too, I would tone that down because that I'm not sure what that is. That looks a little funky. <laughs> but otherwise, um, Tara, I think you're probably closer than you think. Um, just based on these three photos. Kelly, general composition and editing. Super. We can do that. We can do that. Kelly, I'm pretty sure that I follow you on Insta. So love your stuff. Um, okay, there wasn't anything else to say. Um, these are uh, gorgeous. <laughs> I think you probably already know that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm really hoping your clients love these. These, I'm assuming these are client works. Um, you do give plenty of space around. There's a little bit less here. And so I'd be careful here because again, if they wanted to frame it, but these leading lines are awesome. The leading line. So yeah, let's start off with this little one. Yeah. I love how the trees and the wall and the stairs lead us right back to the pupper and just looking up over probably to the owner, just very regal looking as little feet are together. Um, you know, if this is their house, I would leave this in. I might get nitpicky and take this out. Um, this red might be a little bit distracting just because your eyes are drawn to bright and they're drawn to red. Um, so I don't think that is adding anything to the photo. Uh, yeah. If I'm getting super picky, Kelly, <laughs> uh, if I got real picky, I would probably get rid of this red and maybe just tone down this a little bit more. I don't mind it, but you're going to really see it when you print it is like a canvas. 
Um, so I think that's when you go to the background. We'll see what we can do here real quick like. And I do, I really like the composition. You have a lot of room to play with. So I would honestly rather have more room than less. Um, because now you have the option. You can make this a square. You can make it a vertical. You can keep it the horizontal. You have a lot of ways to work this into your client's home. Yeah, I'm not able to do too much with these highlights. Like that's just a blob right in the middle of the picture. Um, so I would do something to get rid of this blob straight dead center of your photo. Um, so like we could take it over. Again, I'm getting really picky. Your clients may not even see that at all, which is fine. But I would say, let's see if there's something Phil can do for us just for this extra, extra hotspot blob. Generate Phil. Let's see what we got. I would like it if there was like more tree. I could do this with just um, the clone stamp too. Nope, that one doesn't look good. That's not too bad. Eh, yeah. Eh. I like how it's all filled in the trees down here. That's not too bad, I guess. Um, we can show it and take it away. Yeah, that's probably better. Just so there's not that your eye drawn to that. And then since we're in here, uh -huh, let's do this. Let's take. Let's get rid of the flowers <laughs> just because now I won't keep trying to look over there. Let's see what happens if we try to get rid of this. I don't know. I'm just being crazy now. All right. No, that looks awful. Don't do what I just did. Never mind all of that. Control Z, Control Z. Never mind. Never mind. But Phil, our good friend Phil could take care of that. But otherwise, look at this. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. All right. Uh, save that. Let's go back over to Lightroom. Looking good. I like that picture a lot. Okay. All right. This one, dreamy, beautiful, gorgeous. Love it so much. <laughs> I, I, Kelly, I'm not sure why you sent these to me. This is amazing. Um, you got all the way on the ground, all the way. And that's what gives it this look is that you've got grass right in front of your lens, which is beautiful. I just love it. Love the highlight in the dog's eyes. Um, the collar's on, but it's not super distracting. Um, yeah, again, they could have like brushed their dog's ears out a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe it had some water right before this shoot. That would have been nice, you know, ahead of time for them to brush that out. Um, and then if you were to crop it in, you have a lot of options. So you could do a lot with this photo. Like this is obviously a good portfolio picture because this is very, very hard to take with your phone. So you could get a really nice close up if they wanted that on their wall. You could do something, you know, like that. This is great for your own copy. I mean, I love these bushes over here just to like frame the dog. But honestly, I think you could have come in like that. Now, that being said, my clients like to be more zoomed in and see more of their pet than those epic pictures, which I love and I teach that you need to take those epic pictures because they're awesome and you never know, which is what you've got here with all of this coolness going on here. But I bet your client probably is gonna do something more like that, so. You know, that's something to think about. If you have enough pickles on your camera, mega pickles, then you can do this. Yeah, you're at 3.2. Yeah, these settings look fine. All the way into 200 mil. That'll also give this. Love it. Love it, love it. And then your last one, Kelly, is this dog. Reminds me of CSU here in uh, Fort Collins. Yeah, I think these silly things that cities put around, that could be edited out for the final image. I don't like that so much, but look at this. This is great. I'm assuming the owner was standing right behind this pillar with her dog. You got great light, great exposure. I oh, look at that chain. That's hysterical. Um, yeah, I, I can't really say much about this picture. I really like it. Again, you have a lot of negative space, but that 
has seems to be a theme in your photos. So I think it's fine. I think your client's probably going to want something more like this and then edit out these little things because I think that shininess is kind of distracting. But this is fun. I really, really like this. Good job, Kelly. Chris. Oh, we're down to Chris. Chris has these. Chris says, just wanted a cute Valentine's vibe photo, which I think is this first one, Winston. Um, and then Chanel, this is a little Christmas shoot, struggling with understanding how to use flash and show the ambient light as well as the Christmas lights. Gotcha. And Lou, a little Christmas shoot with one of my cats. Yep. Uh, I only had one strobe and put it off to the side, but probably should have just put it in front and centered above the wreath. Yeah. Yeah. I see that, Chris. All right. Let's start off with what, who I assume is Winston. <laughs> this just cracks me up. Completely cracks me up. Yeah. Um, again, too close. That's way too close to the edge. It doesn't give you room for framing and printing and cropping. The wild, wild whiskers are awesome. They really are get rid of the crusties like we did with the other picture i would definitely edit out some of these little crusties here and brighten this side a lot um no, well, not a lot but you know otherwise i mean i think this looks so fun i think a client would just love this um even like we were talking about ear position earlier and how her ears are all funkadoo or his and you could tell because that's all part of the whole personality here. <laughs> so let's see. I want to clear this. We don't want any of that. So if we just did gave this a little bit more room, I would only do this also, um, Chris, if they ordered it. <laughs> you know, like I wouldn't do all this extra because her ear is there or his ear. Um Come on, Phil, generate just like a red backdrop, would you please? Um, and I always overlap a little bit so we can fade that into the actual backdrop. If it adds another ear, I'll be shocked. Oh, I won't be shocked. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Okay, number one, let's move this little bar. Number two and number three. Whoops, I got rid of number three. Whoops, number one it is. And then, of course, I would um, get rid of this eye gubby also with this amazing little tool here. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. Get those gubbies gone. Sometimes you have to do it a few times. Just so it behaves. Take a little bit of a clone stamp to fill that in. I am getting super picky here. <laughs> super, super picky. Okay, but you get the idea. All right, and then you're going to come out and you're going to take the dodge tool again. Dodge will make it lighter. Burn will burn it. All right, so we've got shadows chosen. Exposure 24%, which would be fine. So let's see what, how much we can get back here. So we're just bringing that side back a little bit. Better. What a funny, fun picture. Okay. So then let's go back over to Lightroom. What other do we have? So you can kind of see the before and after here. I mean, you can keep it that dark. That's very moody also. It's totally subjective. All right. And then we've got dog in a box. I think you did a good job. Again, you, you're too close. Too close up here. But let's see. If we were to, I would straighten the horizon with this box. Either make the front or the back straight, which I'm choosing the front, because that's what we're going to see. And then we're going to have the dog looking into the frame more. Yeah, it's really, really close right here. But I think overall you did really good. What was the settings on this again? One three hundred twentieth of a second, f two point two, ISO one hundred. Yeah, because you're the back, the bokeh is a problem, isn't it? Yeah, but I think it looks fine. I think it looks great, just like that. Um, just give yourself more room up above. Um, 
And I hope you got a picture of this dog looking towards the camera too, because I think that would be cute. Yeah, I think it looks good. I know that's very, very tricky. Then your last one is, yeah, your kitty looking through the wreath. Yeah, yeah, you, you could have done a little bit different with your um, strobe where you placed it. I can see where you put it here and <laughs> you get a little action in the tongue. That's fun. Um, and then like totally dark down here, right? So this would be awesome as a square. And, you know, obviously you could do it as this size too, but for a client sale, I would really all, oh man, it's so close. So close to being an awesome, perfect square. Uh, I think this would be super, super fun. Let's pull up those shadows. If we pulled up the shadows just within Lightroom, look it, we've already improved it a little bit. Um, part of what your, your, you know, challenge is, is these are very bright and the cat itself is very dark. So you're just gonna run up against that. Now, another thing I would definitely do is all these little pieces of treat, I would get rid of. <laughs> Looks like you got treat or dandruff all over the kitty here. I do not think that's the cat's coloring. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if we were to edit this, let's see what we could do. Um, again, this is getting super picky, but you can see how the highlights have really picked up all of that. So let's make this teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny. Okay, actually make it a little bit bigger. My yellow is just so you can see the cursor. <laughs> um, the actual editing piece is the white circle here. Um, and again, I, I would not go crazy with some of this unless this is like the one that they either had ordered, right? Or um, you wanted them to order. So what happens sometimes is I will, or I will edit something knowing that this is probably the one they're gonna order. And I've had clients call me out on that too. You knew I was gonna order this. And I'd be, yep, I did. <laughs> oh, I know. So anyway, if that was little pieces of treat or um, dandruff or something, some otherwise, I think it's a little too glittery for the kitty cat. So there we go. We got rid of uh, some of that. I think that looks really, really cute. I don't mind the blurry tongue. I think that's fun. I think your client would think that was fun if it was a client. Really good. I think those looked great. Just as I suspected, you are all doing so much better than you give yourself credit for. Really good, really good work in there. But did you see what I saw? Okay, here's, here's the two things that I noticed out of these sets of photos is number one is the depth of field. So sometimes you're trying to use an aperture that is just too shallow and you're missing a little bit of the detail or you're missing focus. And I know that could be because the environment was dark Maybe the room was dark or it was cloudy and dark outside, uh, but it's worth taking a look at your other settings before you set it to the most shallow depth of field on your camera, um, because you want at least to have the two eyes in focus. So I love shallow depth of field. Just be sure the things that you want to have in focus are in focus. And you're, if you're trying to get action photos that you can still do that. So that was one, but the bigger one the bigger one to me was framing and watching the edges. And I've heard that talked about a lot in like landscape photography. You always want to look around the edges because what I find a lot is that we cut off or we crop in too close. Now for these individual pictures, some of these could have already been post-processed to crop in that close. Uh, but what I find when I'm trying to sell images is that I need a little bit more room to accommodate what size they want. It could be a little bit of a different crop. So let's just say you have five by seven and eight by 10. You're gonna bring in the edges, the long edges on a five by seven from an eight by 10. So you need to make sure you have wiggle room and room for a frame and then possible enough room for a canvas wrap. Although you can create the mirrored edge wrap in Photoshop, that's for a different video. So really watch your edges because the most important thing is that you do not cut off the tips of ears and potentially tails. 
And I say potentially because sometimes half of your frame could be a tail, <laughs> right? So we have to just decide, make a creative decision on that. But if just the tip of the ear is gone, it doesn't, it looks um, like unintentional, which it probably was. So you could see, you saw how I was able to rebuild just a little bit and give a little bit more breathing space around the image in some of them. Now, sometimes you want a lot of more room, like the ones that we saw where she had lots of nice empty space, and that could be her style, which is awesome, but she has a lot of leeway. You notice she could crop into very close or vertical or horizontal. So next time that you're out, I would suggest, just based on these images, give yourself a little bit more breathing room. I know we have to think about our mega pickles, how much uh, you know, we have on our camera that we can really crop in or pull away, but really, really, really watch your edges and your, which is your framing. Make sure the whole animal's in there. If you mean for the whole animal to be in there and intentionally crop in close, if that's what you want to do. And along those lines, watch your horizon. Um, the example here wasn't bad, but I would say either have a straight horizon or have a very intentional crooked horizon. So when you're thinking about framing, think of that too. And I know it's a lot to think about all at once. So I tried to be very gentle in these reviews. So um, those are the two things that I noticed. Did you notice that too? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Is that something that you noticed or did you see something different? Oh, is this something that you would be interested in? If so, the sign up for the photo review starting now is in the description and in the first comment. So you can sign up. It's very, very, very inexpensive and you don't have to worry about any of the business part of like in our regular community center. We talk a lot about the business side. If you're not quite ready for that, you just want to talk about photography. This is the membership for you. So uh, it's going to be exactly like what you just saw. Pretty cool, right? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching through this photo review and got some ideas for your next photography session. And we'll see you in the next one. As always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.